what really astonished me is in, in just what almost any aim that I had, I could harness the five senses to do it. So if I wanted to calm myself down, I could do it through the five senses. If I wanted to give myself energy, I could get, do it through the five senses. If I wanted to spark my creativity, I could do it through the five senses. If I wanted to fall asleep, if I wanted to be more productive, if I wanted to connect with other people, if I wanted to listen better, just about anything, there was a way to do it through the five senses. And what I like about it is, first of all, it's very concrete because sometimes with these aims, they can feel kind of transcendent and abstract. And it's not that anybody doesn't agree that they're a good idea, but it's kind of like, okay, well, what do I do tomorrow? The five senses, this is stuff that we can do without spending any time, energy, or money. It's like very much within our, like, you know, really within our grasp, literally. And it feels very tangible. And also it feels fun. I think a lot of people would approach the five senses in kind of a meditative way or like a very like, you know, sophisticated way. Like let's have a sip of coffee for 20 minutes and really analyze it. But I think you can also just do it in a fun way. And I, I found it so energizing and freeing and playful. And I found I was connecting with people and we were just having fun together and laughing like, like through whatever sense we were, we were sharing and, um, and I think for a lot of people, they're really eager for that. You know, that's why so many things build themselves as immersive, because as much as people go on about the metaverse, people are really more interested in the universe. And so I was just really surprised on how it was this, it was sort of this tool that could be applied in so many ways and was so flexible. And yet it was so easy and fun to use, which sometimes things that are very useful take a lot of discipline or a lot of effort to deploy. This one, um, the five senses turned out to be a lot of fun. Let's unpack that because there's a few examples that I'd love to explore. One that really stood out to me, and I think a lot of people in our audience will be struggling with this, is those cravings that we have, whether it's for salty or sweet. And oftentimes they feel insatiable. Like I I need to have that extra M&M, I need to have that extra Pringle. And you shared that just engaging another sense entirely could diminish that craving that you're having, which is counterintuitive when you think about how strong that that craving is for that one sense. Absolutely. This is something that I stumbled upon, an effect that I stumbled upon, but it turns out it works really well. Um, I've heard from a lot of people. So when we're like, so say it's the middle of the afternoon and you're, you're have that urge to have an unhealthy snack. So you're feeling restless or bored or listless and you want to give yourself a little charge. So you're, you're turning to the sense of taste, which is a classic, classic move. Um, but what you can do is you can turn to a different sense instead. So like John loves music. So maybe he saves new music to listen to in kind of that down period. Or I love the sense of smell. So I could go smell something really wonderful. Like I have a whole collection of smells or like something that's just like a really strong smell, like a smell of pickles, which is a really strong, good smell. Or if you love the sense of touch, you could like, you know, use therapy dough or run your hands through beautiful soft yarn if you're a knitter or whatever. And I'm not sure, it it could be that this is just a distraction and it works like in my book better than before, I talk about the strategy of distraction. So it's just, you're on the way, you know, you're headed to the fridge, you're headed to the cabinet to get the crinkly package. And and because now, now you're going to do something else that just distracts you, that's the strategy of distraction. So that's a good strategy. Or it could be that it really is that the body is seeking stimulation, that you're, you are craving some kind of sensory stimulation it's like a cell phone that needs to be plugged into the wall. You need a little shot of energy. And so you're, you're just trying to give yourself some stimulation and you can substitute one for the other. I don't know which is truly an operation. It's probably a combination of both, but whichever is at work, it is effective. And you can just, instead of you know heading for the vending machine, you do something else. You give yourself a different source of sensory stimulation and then your urge to snack goes away. 